Hi, everyone, and welcome back to week three of Hacks for Hybrid Working. Uh, we're so excited to have you back here. And thanks to everyone who has participated thus far and have joined us on this journey of Hacks for Hybrid Working. How are you, Marin? Yeah, really good. I've been enjoying the conversations in Discord. Um, great to see folk joining in and really interesting to hear all the different kind of problems and solutions and tips being shared. So I'm really looking forward to this week. Awesome. Me as well. So uh, if you're just now joining for the first time, have no fear. We have recordings from the first two sessions available on this display site, and we'll make sure to share all the links in the chat as well, just to situate uh, and make sure you have all the various resources in front of you. Uh, so we spent week one uh, just kind of laying the foundation with Hacks for Hybrid Working Unpacked. Um, and last week, uh, we kind of did a deeper dive in digital tools in the virtual workplace. And so it might make sense first to recap last week uh, quickly for those that are just joining, and then we will set the stage for this week. Uh, so Marin, did you want to kick us off with a quick recap? Sure thing. So for those of us who joined us last week, we were looking at digital tools and technologies we're using. And one of the main things we thought about was what works and what doesn't and why. So we looked at our roadmap that we started in week one with the hybrid working wheel, where we reflected on all the different aspects of hybrid working and how it's working for us in our particular context. And we moved on from that and thought particularly around tools and technologies. And for that, we went on to the second part of the roadmap where we had a different meter from green to red or from smiley face to frowny face um, and looked at all the different types of tools. And some of the things we looked at was, you know, which technologies you can use. But we also reflected on kind of, you know, how can you detox your relationship with technology? What are some of the common um, sort of trip hazards when it comes to your digital workplace? And also, what do we do when we think about, you know, fatigue for technology and digital tools? So at the end of um, last week, you should have started your hybrid working roadmap. And if you haven't, don't fear, there are in every blog post links to the roadmap. So just head over there and you can jump in from this week. And you can also look back at the previous weeks. And we asked you to make a list of the tools and platforms that you use for hybrid working and decide where on the spectrum they fall. Are they green? Are you liking them? Are they working well? Are they effective? or are they more towards the other end of the spectrum and they're really not working for you. So that's where we got up to last week. Awesome. And this week, I think we're kind of building on that idea of how we're, ref you know, of reflecting on these digital tools, how they're working for the us, and then also building on that with the idea of just sharing hacks that make life a little bit easier working in these hybrid or distributed or fully remote models. Um, so that's what I'm also really excited about. I think I say that every week, but <laughs> I, I also mean it this week too. I think it's just in the going to end up being like a big list of hacks and tips and tricks for working in these spaces. We also have um, a couple articles that have been linked in the blog posts and just mm -hmm. uh, supplementary resources that we'll make sure to share as well as you're unpacking that this week and building on your own hybrid working roadmaps. Yeah. Well, I'm keen to kind of provide a bit more context before we jump in, because I'm also really excited. We have a whole bonanza of things <laughs> to explore this week, um, which hopefully will provide a bit of fun. You can get stuck in trying out different things. Um, but before we do that, I just wanted to reflect a little bit with you, Lauren, and with everybody here in a conversation about, you know, what agency do we have as home workers or as workers in a hybrid workplace? Um, what's within our control? What do we have influence over? What can we change? But also what sort of issues might be outside of that scope of our control and might be more the responsibility of our employers, um, of the organizations that we work with, the teams we are part of. Um, so I, one of the examples of that, for example, um, that I wanted to mention is that, you know, if you work in an office, you would be expecting your um, a 
equipment to be provided maybe by your employer. There should be a desk, there should be a chair, there should be an appropriate environment to work in. And I think when it comes to hybrid working, things can very quickly turn a little bit into a sort of gray zone. Like, is it your responsibility to provide your own desk and chair and computer equipment and other things? Is it the employer's responsibility? What sort of rules do apply? Um, is it the same rules or are there different rules? You know, how is working in a home environment different from working in an office environment? And so one of the things we want to emphasize before we jump into the exploring all the hacks is that, you know, whilst there is a lot that we can do to improve our environments, there's also things that our employers are responsible for or the organizations we run. So Lauren, I know that you might have thoughts on that as well. Um, are there any uh, particular points you want to make? Yeah, I think you raise a good point, Marin, because, you know, obviously today's session is all about sharing hacks and things that we can control. But I think part of that conversation or the caveat there is also acknowledging that there are things outside of our control, too. And, you know, th these hacks are meant to help and improve. But, you know, there are some things that, you know, you do have to have the support from your employer in order to, you know, build out time for connection with your colleagues. And a lot of the hacks that we'll, that we'll cover today do kind of uh, assume that you have that support. And so right. we, I think, you know, yes, you're absolutely right. The caveat here is that, you know, there are some situations where that support is not there and that's mm -hmm. maybe an indicative of, an, of a larger issue that, you know, hacks can't, hacks alone cannot fix. Um, so it, right. it is worth mentioning and, and acknowledging. Absolutely. Yeah, and if you are in a situation where actually you're thinking, I'd like to learn more about this or what sort of policies are in place, um, maybe on a national level um, or on an international level, um, that's one area that I've kind of researched quite heavily um, for the, the book Leading Virtual Teams, because that's one of the things I wanted to find out about. What does the policy landscape look like? You know, like employment legislation is probably not the sexiest of topics. So <laughs> I'm not going to make a deep dive into it now. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> but if this is something you want to find out about, um, there is actually a really interesting research. Um, I'd be happy to share in Discord <laughs> for those of you who are interested, obviously. Um, but also just to point out that there is a lot where there's data gaps you know there's a lot that we do know and there's a lot of legislation that is happening across the world but it's also a lot of gray area because hybrid working at scale is still quite a new thing you know it's not been a long time home working is not a new thing <laughs> but hybrid working definitely is and the way that our most of our employers set up um that's still a new thing for most of them and many of them will just be you know, winging it right. <laughs> and now yeah, trying to make right. it up. Right. Exactly. So, yeah, but I'm happy to carry on that conversation on Discord. Um, and if anybody has particular questions, feel free to just DM me um, or just ask on Discord. Awesome. Thank you, Marin. So I think for the rest of today's discussion, though, we will be focusing on things that we hopefully do have the power to control that make our working environments just that much uh, easier or better or more efficient. Um, so we'll be covering a range of topics that help, um, you know, th hacks that you can try for yourself versus hacks that you can try with your team or, you know, uh, changes that you can make in your environment. So uh, do we want to jump into that? Yes. Yes, let's. I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. I will add the slides then in here and we'll get Great. started. <laughs> Thanks, Lauren. Yeah, we're going to go and jump right in. Um, and as we mentioned, this is part of our Hacks for Hybrid Working Roadmap. And this week, we're going to focus on part three. And we're going to be looking at different hacks. And Lauren and I are going to start um, in a moment to explore those. And then at the end of the session today, we're going to be coming back to ask um, you to reflect on what hacks you could try for yourself, what hacks you could try for your team, and which single hack could immediately improve your day and why. Now, one of the things that I love saying is um, something that my yoga teacher used to say a lot, um, it's used in mindfulness in general, it's just to think about what you could do to make your day that 1% more comfortable. And I think we often kind of get stuck thinking, oh, you know, there's so much going on, I don't know how to change it all. 
but what is the one thing that might make a difference? So those are some suggestions um, that we have for us today. And we're going to relate each of them back to what we discussed at the very beginning in week one with the hybrid working wheel and reflect on how some of these hacks could help you up your scores in those area that you've identified. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to jumping right in. Um, so Lauren, I hope we're going to um, start chatting about that straight away. But one thing that I um, wanted to start with was that idea of making the workspace more comfortable. Um, one percent is not a lot, so how could you do that? Um, in my own workspace, I've experimented with lots of different things. Um, I've got lots of books. Um, this is actually a photo of my actual bookshelf, so <laughs> um, you can have a little bit of a look of what sort of books I look at when I look next to my desk, just here on the left. Um, I also um, went as far as as deciding on a custom mouse mat. So I have a Femme EdTech mouse mat that makes me happy. Um, and I have a mouse that has rainbow colors while you're using it. So um, I've gone very colorful. But Lauren, what makes a difference in your workspace? What makes it more comfortable? I I love this question and I love um, the phrase or the question, I the starter question about 1% more comfortable because mm -hmm. you said it's not a lot, but for me, that makes it, easier to achieve or easier mm -hmm. to try, right? Because if I, if you say, oh, you know, I've got to have mounted monitors in this full spread, you know, you can get yeah. overwhelmed with this right. idea of having this perfect setup when if you just focus on, okay, let's just make easy decisions or easy, subtle changes that can help. I think it's much more achievable and manageable. Um, and so for me, I think uh, off of this list, I like to... Uh, surround myself with um, in things that inspire me, um, you know, so I have a, a cork board on my wall to the right here, which I don't think I've actually shared. So maybe I'll put that in the spot, but um, it just has a lot of photo booth strips, um, you know, quotes and things that I've collected. Th again, just things that generally make me happy and inspire me. And I like looking at it every day. And so, and it's constantly changing. So that's something that I, I have on my wall. Um, and I know others have um, shared in the spot, uh, you know, pictures or art sort of surrounding their desk. And I think it's so interesting to see what others like to look at every day. Cause of course we can't see that behind us. Right. Um, I also think it's funny um, and probably a requirement that both of us have a Monstera plant in our, in our <laughs> background. <laughs> and I think we're also wearing the same color today too. So I don't know, we, we didn't plan that, but you know, it just <laughs> happened, I guess. Um, so yes, I, I definitely, I like having plants and things that sort of inspire me in my working setting. I think it's really interesting what you mentioned about the pictures on the spot because one of the things I'm really sure about that many of you are keen gamers because some of those setups are definitely not just for work. So yeah. <laughs> I know that some of you are keen gamers for sure, but some of you are also working in temporary spaces. So you might be, you know, hot desking on the kitchen table while, you know, kids are coming home from school or when between going to the office, going to pick up, um, doing other things. And I think um, I used to work a huge amount of time on trains, like in the UK when I was traveling a lot. And I found um, my laptop became a really important object for me to feel kind of grounded in workspace, particularly in transition. So I got completely addicted to laptop stickers. And I really tried to only put stickers on my laptop that I really liked because it would just make me feel happy that, you know, whilst I was on a train, it might be uncomfortable. My laptop was on my knees. I was typing all hands sharp, you know, but it made me feel better and it made a small change. You know? Yeah. Especially so, if, if your office is truly just, you know, that space for me, it's my, my work bag when I'm traveling, like mm -hmm. I invested in a really 
good work bag that I love, you know, and it's super convenient. It has all the right pockets in the right place. And again, right. things like that, that can make a big difference. And I, I think also before we move to the next slide, I will just say, I think you opened a can of worms talking about laptop stickers because <laughs> you're with the crowd that likes those. Um, and I have a, a film that I added to the top of my laptop so I can put stickers on top of that. And then when it mm -hmm. fills up, you just take the film off and then you can. Genius. Yes. can keep those um oh. so yeah i have a, a friend from high school even and he has you know multiple uh, of these that he's turned into like a larger what a good idea. yeah so there i'll put that stuff in the chat too don't you worry that sounds brilliant so focusing on your home working environment you know have a look around if you are in your home working environment whilst you're in a session and just think what would make a tiny difference you know if you make a tiny difference every week over the course of a couple of months that makes a big difference so um i know it sounds simple but it does work um are you ready to move on um lauren i know we could talk more about laptop stickers but i feel <laughs> Maybe this is the next one. So this is an example of a hack to try with your tea. This is called the randomized coffee trials. And I love this. If you're a spreadsheet person, this is a hack to have fun with and try for you. Um, we'll also post the link um, into Discord. And it's obviously in this week's um, blog post. But basically, the idea is that a randomized coffee trial, or RCT for short, <laughs> these are STEM people who've written this, um, <laughs> is a rather fancy name for um, the idea that you connect different people within your organization. Now, this works particularly well if you have quite a large team and there's people there who don't meet each other very often, or if you have a whole organization who might want to take part. And the idea is that every month you specify a time and two people get matched up randomly and meet for coffee. And this could be in person or online. Um, and there is a spreadsheet um, which you can use. There's a free template and there's a whole kind of, theory around this um, and it's from a great site called conversational methods um, which i really like um, because its idea is that you you know lead through conversation so i think i love this idea i must admit i tried this with my team they were not thrilled <laughs> they were like i don't know what i'm going to talk about um, yeah. but i have seen this work really really well and i've really enjoyed it when i take part in it so yeah what do you think lauren would this be something you would try I'm, I'm always game to try anything at least once. You know, I think the introvert in me is, you know, does have a similar reaction to what your team probably felt, which is like, oh gosh, okay, a forced conversation. Here we go. You know? <laughs> but I, I think the other side of that too, and something that I've really learned um, more recently, just in kind of prioritizing connection for a virtual team is if you build it, you know, they will come. And that, that sort of, concept of just if you put these processes in place, you know, they may or may not be successful or take to everyone, but usually someone will find value or at least appreciate the effort of, you know, this is a way that the employer is, you know, helping kind of support that right. time for connection too. So, you know, I, I really, really do believe that having pathways in place for connection and communication is step one. Uh, and so I like that this could this is sort of a unique way at that with um, very little agenda um, and or or planning about what the conversation will be had because that's the other thing too is anytime we've done hybrid working hours or just time to connect without, you know, a larger meeting agenda, they're always really successful and usually mm. pretty fun and rewarding. So I, I like the idea for this and I would probably surprise myself in, in doing that too. Well, if you want to get creative, you might decide to have, you know, <laughs> randomized gin tasting or bring a cookie or, you know, something else, maybe go for a walk. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think the idea to connect with people randomly rather than people you have to have meetings with, I think is a really strong one. And there are definitely people I work with regularly who I don't really get a lot of FaceTime with, you know, particularly when I'm not co-located. So 
you know, that's, I think, an option um, for you to try as your team. Um, I think you've got the next one up here. So I'm going to hand over to you. Absolutely. So, um, you know, workspace hacks and things to try for yourself in your environment, um, kind of, again, building off of previous slides that we've had, but just that that idea that we're making our, our surroundings a bit more comfortable. Um, so that could be a, something as simple as just, you know, updating the keyboard or the mouse that you've got, uh, or thinking about the headphones and how you're taking in your environment as well. Um, light, I also think is huge. So um, I wrote in a recent blog post that I'll make sure is shared, and I think it's in the blog post for this week as well, is just, having natural light for me that's such a big um a big part of the way that i work uh, instead of feeling like i'm you know hold down in a cave um i i think you know having the windows open and natural light is so important mm. One thing um, that's really made me consider for those of us particularly who, you know, provide tech support, formal or informal, is that, you know, I think it's extremely hard to get a sense of what people struggle with when you don't see how they're working. You know, like um, when you see someone in an office and you can hear like their keyboard is broken or they, they might complain of complain of glare or something like that you'd probably walk over there and say oh you know do, do you need help can we fix this you know can I help in any way but at home like you don't really see that and you don't really see kind of people's everyday practice and I think similarly I think we become a lot more prone to just make do you know, oh, it's not broken. It doesn't really work. It gives me backache. You know, I can't type properly. Like, I think it probably took me two years to buy one of these. Like, to put them in front of my keyboard. And for ages, I had, like, like red ridges on my wrists from my standing desk. And it didn't really bother me that much. So I never really thought, oh, do we really need to do something about this? Um, and I think it's, it's really about, like, care but also about taking ownership of your own kind of you know like needs at work um which is i think a hard thing to do as a hybrid person you know a hybrid yeah. worker no that's a, a great point i think one of the so one of the things that is maybe on a list in a future slide but it feels relevant for what we're saying now i have a um, a coffee warmer that's on mm -hmm. my <laughs> on my desk and it's it feels you know, when I bought it, you know, it was like $15 or something. And I remember thinking like, oh, this is a bit extra, Lauren. Like you, you don't really need to have a coffee warmer on your desk. But I love it because I always <laughs> get to drink my coffee before it goes cold. And so having that is, you know, again, it's that idea of just making things 1% better while I'm working. Um, yeah. And I think the next thing I want to tackle is is maybe actually a desk chair, something that, you know, is I use it every day and sit in it all day long. And so making sure that that's comfortable, um, you know, would be important. So, yeah, I've, um, I, I had to do that a couple of years ago and I, I found it quite tough. Um, you know, not that office chairs that we don't choose are always that brilliant, but it is difficult. And I think that's also where the value proposition of home working can be challenging, you know, particularly if it's things that you decide to do that are outside of what employers fund. Kind of how do you decide? Is it more important to spend, you know, hard earned money on a better chair? You know, is that like that's a really good example of where there is really gray areas of sort of, you know, what support is available and what should be available. Um, so do, before you make any decisions about what to get, if you are making any decisions, do check and see if maybe there is support available that you weren't aware of or if there are any other options to explore. So, yeah. Um, what's the next one? Yeah, so this one for me um, is is exciting and feels like, again, it's an extension of last week's conversation just around thinking about making sure that the tools that we have in place virtually are working well for us. And just like you would want to have a clean physical space, I think it's also important to have a, a clear uh, and clean uh, virtual desktop as well. And so for me, one of the things that has worked well actually is having a desktop organizer as my background wallpaper. 
um, because I can categorize my icons and downloads and things on my desktop as I need them into work or to do or important or personal. Um, and so I've have a couple of links that I've shared in a, a personal blog post. So I'll make sure to put it in the chat here too. But it's something that it's it's very easy to add, but has made a big difference for me. Um, so I like that. Um, I also really recommend cleaning up your browser bookmarks and login links. Um, and it's again, it sounds so silly or subtle, but just recently I went through and updated our login links for Zendesk, which is a support ticketing software tool that we use. It's also how we manage um, our accounts. It manages our documentation. It, it's a huge uh, platform for Reclaim. And uh, before updating these URLs, I mean, I was probably taking seven or eight clicks to just log in, which again, not a big deal, not the end of the world. And I just, as you were saying, Marin, I was just kind of dealing with it because whatever. Um, but once updating them, you know, I'm like logging in on the first click and it's just, you know, it's like, why didn't I set this up way sooner? Because it's made a huge difference. Um, so things like that, where again, the 1%, the, the things that we can easily change that are going to make things a bit easier to work with, I recommend doing. Um, similar to to that idea of, of spring cleaning, you know, um, and building off the, the digital detox that we talked about last week, going in and clearing out of applications or tools that are not useful for you. So if you refer back to your roadmap, the things that are in the red that are just maybe not working the way that they should be, can you reevaluate those or consolidate them to some degree so you're not having to check as many places? Um, and the other thing I'll mention too, um, unsubscribing from emails. If you log into your inbox every morning and it's just a whole slew of spam, you know, take five minutes each morning to click unsubscribe. And, you know, may, depending on how many you're subscribed to, it could take a little while, but then suddenly you'll wake up one morning and your inbox will only be full of important things. And that feels really nice, you know, too, that you don't have to sift through this overwhelming, you know, inbox of 60 unread emails when it's only like 10 that are important, you know? So, um, yeah, Marin, what's what's helpful for you kind of in this space? Uh, I loved your blog post and I must admit that I had no idea what a desktop background organizer was <laughs> before we worked on this course. It is not something I've ever come across and I absolutely fell in love with it. Like <laughs> I was just like, this is so genius. How is that not something I know about? And, you know, like that was such a like eye opener for me. Like yeah. I really need one of those. So I've been like Googling and finding out like what I want. And that was such a great idea. Um, I also think I, a lot of what you talk about really resonates with me in the terms of having been in the same job for quite a long time, because I think, you know, my work changes a lot, but I don't really kind of delete as much old, links bookmarks folders you know and i totally have the five clicks to get somewhere because that's the way i know how to get there syndrome um and i so need to update links um and yeah i think that's really powerful um one thing i was going to add to the discussion is i think it was um a discussion i had with someone recently where they were describing about the challenge of managing uh kind of different places to add to do's and how things are managed. And they mentioned that really, if it's in their calendar, which is generally things that are put there by other people, it happens. But if it's something that's like somewhere else on a list, because it doesn't notify in the same way, um, it isn't like, you know, nudging you as much, it can easily slip down the list. Um, and I wonder if you have a thought on this, where I think all of these hacks that you've shared and your post really help you put you in control of your digital workplace. And I wonder if you have any thoughts on that, sort of what do you think is hardest to keep control of? That's um, a really good point. And I have a, a, 
an, another post that I'll share that gets more into time management because I think mm-hmm. the conversations blend quite frequently, especially in virtual spaces where you have a lot of places to check. You're multitasking right. a lot of projects and especially in these environments where a lot of that work can be invisible. It can go unseen. Um, you know, because you're not in person where you can huddle with someone together or, Mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, so it, it's that much more important to be able to articulate the work that we're doing, to be able to give reasonable timelines and set expectations for the work in front of us. And so suddenly when you're in, when you're talking about working in hybrid settings, you know, time management and work prioritization is a huge part of that. Um, mm-hmm. And I could, I feel like we could run a whole other course on that in and of itself. Um, Definitely. But I think, you know, in short, and again, I'll put this link in the chat as well, but I think in short, being able to you know, set goals for yourself around the work that you're doing. So being able to articulate what's on your plate at any given time and what's coming up that week. Uh, But then also, you know, checking in with yourself regularly about those tasks and saying, okay, what do, am I needing to intentionally put on the back burner? You know, Mm -hmm. what, you know, and, and then revisiting that as a separate space. I have a back burner list of just ideas and goals and things that I would love to get to. And once a month, I have a task or a reminder where I go in and check on that list. Is mm-hmm. that list still relevant? Should anything be removed or put back on the forefront of my plate? Or am I, you know, okay with these things sitting here in a space that's not forgotten, but intentionally set aside? And so I think like, you know, whatever processes those are for me, I use Asana and my team will laugh at me because I, you know, have become the Asana documentation girl. But I think, you know, having that, that's, that process in place, um, you know, to be able to define, you know, the types of work and and what you're taking on at any given time uh, is half the battle. I can only uh, agree with that. And I know that at it leads us nicely to our next set of hacks, um, setting yourself up for success. Right. Um, and again, so this is a picture of my actual office window that I have here. You can see my plant in the background. Um, so I, I mentioned opening the windows, um, you know, getting fresh air, um, making sure that you're standing up and stretching once an hour, all things that kind of go in to this idea of working productively, but things that are in your power to control outside of work as well. Um, I think one of the things that has have also helped for me, um, the background beats playlist on Spotify, Mm -hmm. or just having, um, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, I guess sound in the background that Mm -hmm. doesn't have lyrics for me is a big deal because anytime there's lyrics, I get distracted. I want to sing Mm -hmm. along and suddenly I'm pulled from my work. So uh, that playlist has been great. Um, And then talking about things that inspire us to do good work. uh, For me, it's as simple as having good pens and a good notebook that makes me want to write and focus and use it. So um, I'm not sure, um, Marin, if there are other things in your environment that help set you up for success, but those are some of the tips that have worked well for me. Mm. Oh, I think that's really inspiring. And I think it's a, a really great example of where, you know, homeworking environment and work-life balance are kind of, you know, two sides of the same kind of coin. Um, as you can tell from me moving around, I'm standing most of the time when I'm at my desk. So I have two desks next to each other, a standing one and a sitting one. Um, but I love being able to be a bit more mobile during the day. And I also um, listen to a lot of background sounds, um, either like sort of beats, as you say, no lyrics, or I really like listening to rain. So very often in my office, you can hear thunder in the background. Um, I find that's really relaxing. Um, But I think, you know, ultimately, for me, it's a question of, you know, how productive can I be? How productive do I want to be? Because very often, particularly over the last two years, I think we've all had to work as hard as we could for as long as we could. And... I think the main drift of these tips and hacks is about sustainable success, Mm. not 
as hard as you can for as long as you can, right? Because we want to try and set ourselves up for success in the long run. Um, and I think I'm the first to kind of admit that I don't know always where my boundaries are. And some days I step away from work and I'm like, I have a splitting headache and I'm totally exhausted. And my evening is a washout because I've just given everything I had. And so I just sit on the sofa and I'm just like, oh my God, I've worked too hard today. And <laughs> You know, I think a lot of these ideas about fresh air, standing up, reflecting on your pace of work, I think they sound kind of like nice to haves, but for me, they're absolutely must haves. Non negotiable. Yeah, I, I would completely agree with that. And I, I like what you said about work sustainability and real remembering that this isn't a sprint every day or, or you know, but it's it's a long term plan and setting up, you know, a, again, kind of going back to that idea of time management. Sometimes you can have these processes in place and look at your calendar and say, oh, I've got a I got a blank space there. So sure, I'll put something on the calendar. It's free. But I think ju it's just as important to have that free time on your calendar to actually do the work that you're talking about as opposed to just meeting about it constantly. So I have a, a, a rule, no more than three meetings a day, ideally. Or, you know, if I have a couple of days where I have to just, you know, pile in meetings for, for various projects or whatever, you know, uh, conversations are happening, then I, you know, have no meetings on Fridays or no meetings on Tuesdays or try to just have that balance even throughout the week mm. to, you know, give yourself downtime um, to do that work and to, again, reflect on the pace. Um, you know, are you setting goals that are too, too uh, aggressive, you know, that you cannot keep up with? You know, do we need to take things off the plate or readjust timelines? And I think constantly checking in with yourself um, around those tasks is, again, step one in the larger picture of being able to communicate that to a virtual team. Yeah. I, I hear that. I think many in the room can definitely identify with that. And I, I think, you know, there is like a real culture of like being busy for the sake of being busy. And um, I'll never forget, like when I started my current job, I took it over from someone who had it for 10 years and I was really inexperienced at the time. I was like, you know, really impressed by this person who to my mind was very successful and he worked overtime every day he worked at weekends he emailed me at 6 a.m on a sunday you know he was like a complete workaholic and when i took on the job after having worked with him for two years um i promised myself like to heed that warning and unless there is a genuine emergency you know and i really mean a genuine emergency which in my job happens very rarely i really don't work overtime or at weekends you know, yeah. and I know lots of people who start day one in a new job and they're like, oh, I couldn't leave till 8 p.m. because I was so busy. I'm like, well, on day one, you know, like if that's how you start, that's how you're going to go on. Right. And it's hard to jump off the busy wagon. So I mean, it's very tricky. And I think, um, yeah, that's definitely a concept that I have struggled with in the past because there's always work that can happen and especially if you're passionate about that work you know it's like yeah. oh time flies you know i'm just gonna get this done you know and so i think that's i i try to balance that with also knowing that there are days where my job sort of ebbs and flows depending on the types of projects at hand too or if i'm running an event or if something's kind of coming up where it's like you know this work simply has to get done you know yeah. and there is a time limit on that. So knowing like, okay, I've got to do a, a larger chunk of work here, knowing that next week I'm going to take time for professional development or to slow down and do, mm -hmm. um, you know, work in a different way. And so trying to just even balance out the type of work that you're doing um, and being able to adjust based on how your position or um, you know, larger work goals are ebbing and flowing too. So yeah, there, there's a whole um, conversation that we could continue to get into. I'm sure other folks could relate in Discord, so maybe we'll continue it there. But for now, do you want to jump to the next slide? <laughs> cool. So um, this one is also, I think, something that we have to consider when talking about 
um, working in virtual settings. Uh, and I know that folks have been uh, thinking about this for a couple of weeks already. Um, you know, even in week one, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about you know, micro connections and building out time to connect with mm -hmm. colleagues. And so I think one of the hacks or things that there are a couple of hacks that you could try to build out connection uh, with your colleagues. Uh, Marin, you shared the coffee trials earlier today. Um, I think other ones that have worked well for our team. Um, I have a, a big list here and I'll make sure to share uh, the blog post um, that I have written up about this as well. We've, we've just recently started doing Music Mondays over the summer, which have been great. Uh, so uh, folks in the team will take turns uh, controlling the playlist on our virtual radio station called Reclaim Radio, which has been really great. Um, we've done snack boxes uh, for folks where we've sent out snacks to, to various folks and they've received, you know, a big box of snacks in the mail. Um, we've done virtual birthday cards. Um, and, you know, just trying to build in different mediums, knowing that everyone has different working styles, I think is really important too, especially when you start talking about like meeting fatigue, you know, our wow. virtual meeting or our virtual working hours are really great and I love them, but I also try to have other elements too, because it's also, you know, another meeting on the calendar. So being able to encourage connection through, you know, impromptu Slack huddles or the water cooler channel in Slack has been great for us. Um, and I think just generally, um, as I mentioned previously, building in pathways to communicate and talk about the work that we're doing, to, to narrate that, to ask for help, to encourage regular learning. Uh, I, I think it builds a sense of camaraderie and um, allows, you know, colleagues to empathize with each other when they're able to, you know, ask questions and say, oh, yeah, I've been thinking that for a while, you know, so um, I know that's more related to to work connection, but uh, there are tons of other hacks in place and tips for outside of work connecting to uh, Marin, one of the ones that you have mentioned uh, your team, I think you had like a chat and bake session or something. Right. Um, yeah. So how has that worked for, for your team? Um, well, we were trying to do something um, like a mixture between online, offline. So we um, chose a kit for baking and then we sent that to everybody we are quite a small team, so that's financially yeah. and practically viable. And then we um, managed to chat and share pictures of our baking as we went along. So we made uh, lemon cupcakes, I think, with sort of raspberry <laughs> sprinkles. They were vegan and gluten-free, so suitable for most dietary requirements. And it was really fun. Some of my colleagues were good bakers. I am a terrible baker. <laughs> um, so it was definitely one of those things um, that I didn't ex excel at, but um, everybody in the household, dogs included, enjoyed um, eating the trying. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah, I know how to make, you know, a couple of good things, but new stuff is, is always a, a gamble, I guess. <laughs> yes. Um, well, we've got a couple more hacks before we move on to talk about how you're going to use your roadmap for this week. Um, so one of the ones that we wanted to share was just if you can't escape your desk and you have maybe very limited space or you're just with your laptop, how can you take a break? Um, so the idea here is two hacks, which you don't need to leave your laptop for, um, opening a digital window using a tool called window swap, which opens a new window somewhere in the world, um, which is good and bad. So you can be staring at a blank wall. You could be looking out at the French Riviera. There are a lot of different windows. I love clicking through this. And sometimes like I spend five minutes just opening windows. Um, and then thanks to Taylor for sharing this one in week one, um, which is called drive and listen which I've never come across before. And I love this one. It allows you to take a digital drive and listen to local radio. So cool. I have played around with those and you can lose a lot of time doing that too. Cause you're just, you know, cause there, there's so many and they're randomized. So each time you'll go back and it's a new experience. I love it. 
And it's particularly useful if you have a lot of responsibilities alongside work, like with family or other care responsibilities, and you might find it difficult to join into a lot of communal activities. These are ways to take a break from hybrid working um, without really having to you know, plan for anybody else and just give yourself a little break. Um, the next one is one that I made up myself, um, but this um, is something called positive feedback by post, and it does require you to send things in a mail to be a full version, but you can obviously do a digital equivalent. Um, and I in, invented this activity based on an article I read in the Harvard Business Review around um, positive feedback. And it argued that a lot of people get positive feedback alongside negative feedback. So they might get feedback from the manager saying, you did this really well, and these are the areas you can improve on. Or this is a good thing, here is a thing you could do better, or more to do, or always striving for something next. Um, so the idea is that in this context, positive feedback usually is outweighed by the negative, and we kind of keep the negative feedback on board more than the positive. But if we share something that's only positive, that makes a much bigger impact. So I blogged about this as well, and I've made like a little template, but basically the idea is that you choose someone or assign people to send one thing a positive bit of feedback to someone else and they basically get a small letter in the post um, and we use these stickers um, to to kind of give people a heads up that there was something good in the post rather than a bill or you know something more formal um, and you just send something nice and it could be positive reflections on their work it could be something you know that they did for you so kindness um, and it worked really well and my team really loved it and we now do it once a year I love that idea. Um, yeah. There have been a handful of times where I have received thank you notes from people at work or have sent them out, you know, to to schools that we've worked with. And I always love that that physical representation of thanks too. I, you know, I so I really like this idea. I also think just building off of this quickly, you know, one of the things that our team tries to do is, you know, anytime you're giving positive feedback or compliments, like that's always done in public, in a public setting where you can celebrate the work happen happening, right? And, and really talk about, you know, and reflect and celebrate on that in a, a public space, whereas like the negative things or, you know, the areas for improvement that is always done privately. And I think having that distinction also does set clear boundaries and times for both discussions without conflating the two or blending them together. So um, I, I really like that, this idea too. Well, I hope that many of you might be inspired, um, particularly if anybody is a fan of writing letters or writing postcards. Um, I think sometimes, um, particularly if you're giving people positive feedback, as you say, Lauren, a material thing can be um, a really powerful thing. So this is our last set of hacks before we go on to discuss the exercise for this week. Um, and one of the things I hear a lot about um, on social media in particular is, you know, we went out for a team treat or we went on an away day or we had a goodie box delivered in the mail. And for some of us, it's just not possible to do these things. You know, some of us have no budget. We have a tight budget. Sometimes you just have to make do with absolutely no resource. So just to complete this, we wanted to share some hacks that you can try that require no budget at all. And I know, Lauren, you already mentioned music, um, which I think is a great one, and I'll come back to you in a minute um, so you can share some more of those. But two that um, I wanted to mention briefly is similar to the positive feedback day, um, my team is a huge fan of send someone a compliment day. Um, and it could be a really random compliment. Um, but generally, when you start the day off with getting a compliment, it is going to be a better day. So that can really be a fun thing. And also, particularly if people are really in a low mood and there's little engagement, um, one of the things we've done in the past is to invent our own emoji scales for how we are. And that could be, you know, like instead of asking someone, how are you? And the answer in 
very probably, particularly in the UK, is I'm fine, thank you. How are right. <laughs> I have no idea afterwards how that person is. You know, they, right. they could have had a death in their family yesterday and they would have still said, I'm fine, thank you. Um, so an emoji scale is a really good idea of, you know, letting people express how they are in a kind of fun way, but also it gives you some insight into how someone is. So that can be a fun way of exploring it. I really like that. And I think it's it's an easy way to express without feeling like you've got to unload your whole backstory to a, mm -hmm. a colleague, you know, or something like that. But I, I have felt in meetings before, especially one-on-ones where I'll say, you know, Hey, how's it going? And they're like, I'm good. You know, how are you? And I'm like, no, but how are you? Like, how are you doing? You know, yeah. work aside, I asked how you are doing. Um, and I think, um, Anytime you make that distinction, regardless of being in a work setting or not, people are like, oh, oh wait, you're actually asking, right? And I think um, that's something that I'm trying to be more intentional about doing in meetings in general, too, is just, you know, not showing up as a work robot, but showing up as a human being that, you know, is going to take time to connect, you know, before jumping into work. Um, right. So I think that that's an easy a thing that costs nothing, right? You know, where it's like, let's be fully, you know, engaged in what we're doing here. Let's bring yeah. our full attention to this space and let's not rush it. Let's, and again, it's always something that I can improve because I'm always like, okay, efficient, let's get, get to what we need to do. But I think it is yeah. important to slow down and um, remember that connecting outside of work topics is just as important for us, so. Yeah. Well, um, at this stage, I hope you're still with us and you're enjoying <laughs> this bonanza of hybrid working hacks. Um, but we are going to just refocus um, before we wrap up for this week and just um, take a step back at what's happening with our um, roadmap, because we want to make sure that you use these hacks um, to improve things for you. So, um, we have, um, as I was saying, part three of the roadmap this week. And the idea is that there's three areas for you to um, review all the different hacks that we've shared, that you've shared in Discord, that you've come across in the last three weeks. And think about which hacks to try for yourself in the first instance. And that is one of the things Lauren and I have talked a lot about in the last hour, sort of, you know, different aspects of that. So Lauren, I'm going to put you on the spot here. <laughs> Which heck are you going to try out this week? Oh gosh. Um, I feel like I need to go back to the list of, <laughs> of, of things. Um, I really like the, um, the opening the virtual window um, mm -hmm. and going on a virtual drive. I think that's the best. I also really liked what you said just about how it took you two years to get a, a wrist uh, support um, yeah. or, 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 and when you said that, I was like, yeah, why don't I have something like that, you know, for as much as I'm typing. So, um, I'm going to try to just, you know, kind of reflect on what I do have in place and see, are there things where I'm just sort of dealing with it similar to those bookmarks, um, and, and try to make my space just 1% more comfortable doing some of those hacks. Um, what about you? I am definitely trying the uh, desktop background organizer. I love that. And I can't believe I haven't got one. Like, yeah, I feel like they're... late to the party here. They're fun to build out, too. I mean, you talk about, you know, surrounding yourself with inspiring things. You know, mm -hmm. I enjoy each month building one um, in Canva or wherever. So we'll make sure you have the links in Discord if that's something you're interested in doing also. Oh, I love it. Um, so... If you think about yourself, and it might be that you want to stop there, it might be that you have um, things you want to focus on. If you're not sure where to start, go back to your hybrid working wheel and look at those areas that you really wanted to focus on and then see if there is a hack that matches up. But thinking about hacks to try with your team, um, is there one that inspires you, Lauren? Is there one that you're going to make reclaim um, team go and, and try out? Um, I'll try to refrain from making anyone do it, <laughs> but I really liked, uh, the emoji scale, um, as sort of like a language that the team uses. Um, I think anytime you can kind of further 
integrate various cues or uh, using the tools as sort of this unwritten language for how the team communicates, I think uh, you're only kind of improving things. Uh, so I, I really like the the um, emoji scale. I think that's something that we can try for sure. That sounds really awesome. Um, again, I think I'll be sharing quite a lot of the um, hacks that we shared with my team. Um, I'm just going to post lots of links and see what they pick. But um, I really love Music Mondays. I like the idea of kicking the week off with some energy. And um, not many of us work on a Monday. Like the virtual office can feel a little bit like there's tumbleweed blowing. Um, <laughs> and it's so busy so I think that'll be really fun I think having a bit of um, music injected into Mondays um, and the main question we want you to focus on particularly if there's a lot of areas you might be interested in is to try and think about which single hack could immediately improve your day you know what is a quick fix start with low hanging fruit think about what is one thing that could immediately make a difference. Um, and also, if you have some areas of your work that we don't have a hack for yet, sh share them with us in Discord. Um, this can be our mission for the Q&A session at the end of this week, um, for us to have a look at any unanswered problems or questions or areas. Um, so that can be our challenge. What do you think, Lauren? I think yeah. we should be able to find something. Absolutely. Yeah. I And this week, we our Q&A will actually be happening on the radio. So uh, we'll be taking your questions over the radio if you have them. Um, and if not, we will be sharing... Um, you know, just additional hacks and things that have come in throughout the week uh, and just spending <laughs> an hour chatting on the radio. So I'm excited oh. for that too, just to build in different mediums for, again, working uh, in, in these virtual settings. I love that. And I think, am I right in saying Jim is joining us for the radio this week? He is. He will be making a special appearance. So it'll be, it'll be a good conversation. I'm excited. I'm um, particularly like um, when we designed this week, um, one of the things we talked about a lot was that, you know, a lot of the best parts of hybrid working don't necessarily happen when you're on the screen. And I love the radio as a medium for connection um, without having to be on a Zoom call or an equivalent thereof. Um, and I just think it's going to be so interesting to see how you how you all find it, you know, yeah. just hearing our voices um, and thinking about how you can join into that. So, uh, yeah, I'm very excited about that. Absolutely. Um, and then uh, we'll stay in touch in Discord throughout this week, too, uh, as folks are continuing to build out their hybrid working roadmap. Uh, but that's something that we will come back to next week as well, uh, is just right. kind of finishing up the roadmap. Uh, and anything else that folks should be prepared for for next week? Yeah, so um, for your checklist this week, as you say, um, add any hacks that you want to try out to your hybrid working roadmap. And if you have things that you can't try out at the moment, but maybe you just want to save for future reference, there's some extra space in the roadmap. So you can just add links or just add notes, um, bookmark anything maybe for future reference, particularly if you're pressed for time. Um, but we hope that each one of you can at least try out one thing and really hoping that you can share with us a little bit about how you get on by the time we get to Friday, or maybe try it out and use the radio as your hack if you <laughs> want to just join us and say, hey, my hack is the radio. Um, and then, yeah, next week, it's all bringing us everything together. Um, I can't believe we're already in week three. So I know, it's crazy. But I, I think this, this course for me has inspired sort of... Um, I, I don't want, to, as we come to the end of this course, to, you know, never think about hybrid working again. Like, I think it, <laughs> this course has inspired this this recurring theme of reflection and how we can make our settings better. Um, and so I'm excited to continue chatting about that into next week and setting up ourselves for success into the future. So, Marin, thank you, as always, for your time. Um, and thanks to everyone who has been participating in Discord. We will see you there and we'll see you on Friday at the radio. See you on the radio. Yeah.